Where's the stock market headed? Up, down, or just plain sideways? Where are the best opportunities right now? Dave cuts through the fluff in a no-nonsense manner. Random Thoughts with Dave Landry Podcast. Here's your host, Dave Landry. This is your Random Thoughts Podcast for February 26, 2016. You want to trade trends? Well, you better know these 10 things. Before we get into today's column, I'd like to thank Traders Expo New York for once again having me speak. More specifically, I'd like to thank Julie for Logistics and, of course, their fearless leader, A.A. Ron. It was yet another wonderful experience. If you haven't attended one, then you don't know what you're missing. And, last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank everyone who attended my speech. It was great to meet many of you in person. Now let's talk about trends. Number one. Markets go up and markets go down. Yeah, I know, duh. Like Pinocchio being a bad motivational speaker and Kenny Rogers being a pain in the ass to play cards with, everyone knows that. That's fine and dandy until the market actually goes down. I see it all the time. For instance, recently in my world travels, I have met many traders, and I put a quote around traders, who have held on to stocks in spite of their overall markets dropping 30% or more. And if the market is down 30%, so are they. Once in a trade, people begin to reason why a market should not be going down, or worse, why a bottom is near and it's, quote, too late to sell, unquote. Unfortunately, unless you're Bill Clinton, what is, is. Number two, it's always darkish right before it gets more dark. Speaking of being down like the market, never forget that trends can last much longer and go much farther than most are willing to believe. There's no such thing as value because a market is low. The Nasdaq seemed pretty cheap in 2001 when it was down 50%, but it then dropped another 30% from those levels. The reason reasoning and logic often don't work in markets is because you're dealing with the fickle nature of the human psychology of the participants. Never forget that people can sell for a variety of reasons that have nothing to do with the market. And sometimes, selling can beget more selling. Senior might decide that he better bail before Junior's Ivy League college fund turns into a community college fund. On the flip side, there may be no reason why a stock at high levels continues to go higher, but it is. Again, what is, is. Me drawing big blue arrows back in the late 90s is what earned me the title, Trend Following Moron. I wasn't very flattered at the time, but it did help me to recognize when I might be trying to outsmart the market instead of just following along. T-shirts and buttons soon followed, and of course, a domain purchase. Yeah, trendfollowingmoron.com is me. Never forget that people can buy or sell for reasons that have nothing to do with the market. Number three, the only way to profit is to capture a trend. To make money on a long position, you must sell higher than you buy. To make money on a short position, you must cover lower than you shorted. I know, double duh. However, you'd be surprised at how many people fight trends. Number four, there's a beautiful concrete rule when it comes to technical analysis and no other methods. If a market is going from A to C and B is in between, it will have to pass through B on its way to C. There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to fundamentals. True, trading is a little more difficult than just buying at B. Note, although I do have an IPO strategy dubbed buy at B that does just that. But I can assure you, that you'll do much better looking to buy at B than fighting a trend. In fact, I once helped a student who was flunking a stock trading project in his finance course. I told him he could only quote-unquote buy at new highs and be forced to quote-unquote trade, which the professor made them do randomly. He had to sell losing positions first. He went from last in class to finish in the top three. Number five, indicators don't indicate trend or anything. They illustrate Indicators are derived from price. Therefore, they are not predictive. They simply illustrate what's already in the price. Hold on there, Big Dave. Don't you use moving averages? Yes, I do occasionally use moving averages, but mostly with my Landry Bowtie pattern. Download from free reports and see this video on YouTube. Obviously, those links are on my website. However, I always look at price first. The great thing about the Bowtie moving averages is that they often alert you to the fact that the longer-term trend might be losing steam or actually changing direction. Again, though, They are just helping to illustrate what's already in price. This brings us to our next point. Where is and where was price? Number six, you must always start with or come back to net net. I have a brother-in-law named Andy. I love him to death. But when Andy asks your opinion, he's already formulated what your proper reply should be. Should you not agree with him, 
he will begin to, albeit very convincingly, argue his case. I have dubbed this Andy-ing. Many feel compelled to share with me their latest and greatest indicators. Don't get me wrong. I'm flattered that they would like me to opine. However, 99.97% of the time, they really don't care what I have to say. They're just Andy-ing me, looking for confirmation that they have discovered the Holy Grail. The bottom line is that when you strip away all those indicators, all you're left with is price. And price doesn't lie. The market is either higher, lower, or about the same as it was. Therefore, never forget that the quote, net, net, unquote, change when it comes to markets. For instance, the P's, S&P 500, are down around 11% since last summer. Depending on the time of the day, they're pretty much where they were well over a year ago. This means that they haven't made any progress in a long time. And those who bought over the last year or so are probably wondering if the market truly does, quote, go up longer term. See myth number one in the free report at the top of my homepage. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Number seven, surprises tend to happen in the direction of the trend. Take a look at AIZ, see my website for the chart, a stock that we are short in the bottom portfolio. It and nearly all the other shorts this year have also had surprises in the direction of the trend. Of course, things don't always work out so well, but in general, surprises do tend to happen in the direction of the trend. Number eight, they're not like a bus. The secret to trading is patience. Write that down. Great trends don't come along every day. You have to grind it out day after day, waiting for the next trends. You print money for a while, but go back to grinding it out all too soon. They're streaky. My friend Peter Marthy criticized me after a speech, which he arranged, by the way, for using that word. He told me that you're making it sound too elusive. Well, it is. And I just like to tell it like it is. Believe me. I'd make a lot more money in my educational business if I told you that you can make money every day and all day. Many give up usually right before the next trade occurs. This is the African Queen Syndrome I often talk about. See the videos on my website. Unfortunately, as I wrote in layman's, you must be present to win. When the great trend finally comes along, you can't let it go to your head. I've seen people do some really stupid things when they hit the quote, print money, unquote face. They think they, quote, get it, unquote. They begin getting careless. The godlike complex causes them to over leverage, begin taking less than ideal setups, and generally trying to beat the system by getting in earlier. And in severe cases, their ego begins to take control of their personal life. Hey, Big Dave, are you holier than now? Nope. I'm fairly local. I've been around. I've seen the streets. You're walking down. 21 Pilots. And of course, got the t-shirt, the aforementioned guru one, not 21 Pilots. You have to be consistent and patient in your approach. During less than ideal conditions, you need to trade less. This doesn't mean taking smaller than normal positions. It means that you are picky in your stock picking. Take right now. It would have to be the mother of all setups for me to buy a stock while the market is in a downtrend. Either that or the daughter of all setups provided that the stock had the potential to trade contra to the overall market. To that, I give you Exhibit A. C-E-N-X, a stock that we are long. Number nine, they're hard to ride. Covell once equated riding a trend to riding a bouncing Bronco. In fact, this analogy caught on so much that he changed the cover of his later editions of his book to a cowboy riding a Bronco. Big contra trend moves often occur to shake you out and then the trend promptly resumes. We can actually use this propensity to our advantage. In fact, this is the basis of my trend knockout pattern. Shorts are even a better example of the Bronco analogy. They sell off nicely, making you think that the shorting thing is a piece of cake, and then BAM! Short covering and bargain hunters drive the price of the stock straight back up. The buy quickly exhausts itself after, of course, shaking you out first. Again, we could actually use this propensity to our advantage. Sharp retraces are the basis of my witch hat setup. Number 10. You can't predict them, but you can follow them forever. The future is uncertain. We don't know when there will be a trend. We wait. Once we identify one, we could then seek to get on board. We don't know if the trend will end tomorrow, the day after, or years from now. Therefore, if blessed with a quick profit, we pocket half and then hopefully enjoy the ride on the remainder for a long, long time. Last week at Traders Expo, someone asked me about my holding period. I replied, 10 years, hopefully longer. Obviously, I could take it out much sooner than that, but my ultimate goal is to ride a portion of the trade forever, at least until the market tells me otherwise. Hey, Chief Orman, can we talk about the markets? Oh yeah, the markets. 
Getting back to last week at Bandcamp, I mean Traders Expo, I told the crowd that the market would have to go on to make new highs before I'd feel better about it. Someone said, but Dave, you have a bunch of shorts in your portfolio. Would you lose a bunch of money? Well, we've already taken partial profits on them, so hopefully, I know, a dangerous word in this business, we'll get stopped out at a profit and then we can go back to the business of buying stocks. It comes with the territory. Sometimes you have to be willing to give up open profits in order to hopefully, there's that word again, stay with the trend. You might want to write that down too. It's been pretty easy so far in 2016. Oh, I'm not bragging. It'll be my turn in the barrel soon er, or later. We just saw some shorts and took them. The market did continue nicely lower. Thank you, baby Jesus. Ricky Bobby. Now's the tough part, the retrace. Retrace rallies from high levels give hope to the buy and hope. Oops, I mean hold crowd. They punish the shorts. To put it mildly, they suck. You can't get too caught up in them. Yep, it might be the mother of all reverses, but so what? Proper money and position management will keep us in the game. And, again, if the market goes back to new highs, we'll just start following along. Moron implied. The P's, S&P 500, managed to make it to multi-month highs. Let's not start kissing each other just yet, though. It could retrace quite a ways and still be in trouble. Back to trot way out and it still looks like the mother of all tops, or at least a big sideways rage. Ditto for the quack. That's a NASDAQ. The rusty, IWM, still looks the worst. Peak to trough, it's dropped over 25%. For what it's worth, the media calls a bear market at 20. So far, it looks like nothing more than a pullback. This is concerning when you consider that it's a broad base, hence the 2000 in its name. As I've been preaching for months, it has been the poster child for what's really happening. Many sectors are getting choppy, like the market. Some, like retail, are having the mother of all retracements. Maybe you might even turn into a bonafide reversal. That's okay. I'm willing to wait versus anticipate. On the long side, metals and bodies still appear to have turned a corner. Usually the sectors that are beat up the most and the longest tend to be the first to turn. This isn't reason in and of itself to buy a market. See rule number two. But when you begin to see emerging trend patterns, for example, the aforementioned CENX trade, it's worth a shot. So what do we do? Again, getting back to bad camp, I was talking about shorting and since that some were uneasy. I then paused and said, look, there's nothing wrong with just sitting in cash. The crowd seemed relieved, knowing that it's okay to do nothing. This is the tough part, when the market is choppy every tracing. I think you can play both sides with a big caveat. Be picky. Make sure you really like the setup. If you couldn't live with yourself, if you didn't take the setup, then by all means, take it. Anything less, be willing to pass. On the long side, unless you think you have the mother of all setups, focus on the commodity-related area since it can trade contra to the overall market, just in case the downtrend resumes. Just don't throw darts here, either. And never forget, the trend is your friend. C1 through 10. May the trend be with you. Dave. P.S. I'm having a special on my core trading service this weekend. Save $500. No promo code needed. See www.davelandry.com. Want to learn more about trading? Visit davelandry.com for free reports, articles, videos, and live webinars. Got a question on trading? Email Dave at dave at davelandry.com.